Glencoe reminds me of travelling home. Driving north across Rannoch Moor, the first mountain you see guarding the entrance to the coal is Bucolet of Moor. Having served my climbing apprenticeship on other mountains, I've not climbed many routes here, but every time I drive past the Bucol, I notice more and more of those famous climbs I've yet to do. Many of the climbs would not be difficult for me now, so I often climb them solo, which gives them a much deeper sense of adventure than they would have with a rope. But one thing I've never done is climb them in free solo style, but share the climb with a partner doing the same. This morning we're on Bucoletta Moor in Glencoe. We are heading for Agag's Groove. I'm with Kev Shields today. Uh, Kev's done this route, what, 20 odd years ago? <laughs> the angry young man days. Yeah. <laughs> it's only just getting diluted now, probably, to be honest. Nah, man, you're just an angry old man. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just angry about different things now, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I have only done Curves Ridge on this side of the mountain, some of the most famous rock climbs in Scotland. So we're just going to go up and just tandem solo it today. Uh, or we'll see how we go on. We'll, we'll go up and uh, if it feels good, we'll keep going up. And if it doesn't, then we'll not go up. I'm pretty excited actually. Like I've All the soloing that I've done in the past has all been on my own. I don't think I've ever soloed a route with someone else. Have you? Not. Well, apart from like easier scrambles, but I've never done like a route way somewhere else. So, yeah. so, so it should be a good laugh, and it's a beautiful day. <laughs> so, yeah, should be really fun. Here we go. Solo climbing is a meditative discipline, unless it goes wrong, which it must never be allowed to do. Progress is light and flowing, but also methodical, taking care with the rock and the footholds, staying always in balance and always having a secure hold with at least one hand. But that's easy for me to say, I have two hands. Soloing, even on an easy climb like this, is not for everyone. I certainly would only do it with a climbing partner who knows the score. What knowing the score means is difficult to define. It's one of those things you hopefully know when you see it. Aye, absolutely superb. Just Such nice, nice and rocker. just nice and involved and it's just the outlook. Perfect it's weather. Just I brilliant. Doesn't get much better, really, does it? It's pretty chuffed I managed to get that on the ledge. <laughs> What do you think to my drone flying skills? That impresses me. That's <laughs> more hair away from a crash landing. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully reassuring when it's buzzing a bit of, above our heads. <laughs> <when we're laughs> it's funny when you're moving, you're moving fast, but then sitting here in this ledge, it's really chilled. Aye. It's just really nice. Considering the situation, yeah. you know, when you turn around and face like the other way, it is really open. There's nothing special or hidden about gaining the confidence to know climbing well enough to solo and to choose your climbs correctly. It's simply the sum of decades of passion for moving well on rock, understanding your own body and mind, and consistent and countless moves made on mountains. The relative safety of doing it is underscored by a recognition that the probability of a mistake is never zero since we are all human. But keeping in mind that mistakes are possible is what improves our judgement to the point that climbing can be safer than life in the glen, which is not all that safe anyway. What's that? Don't fucking say that! They said too bad.
when you first did this right three hundred years ago? Did you think you'd be coming back in 20 years or so on it? No, not never. It's quite cool, that, isn't it? It's like... Aye, because then it was like, it was almost just a wee hobby, just something. Yeah. Like, at that point, to be honest with you, actually, that day was when it started really changing for me. So I was climbing with, you know, Mikey Brownlow. Uh-huh. And Mikey was, like, guiding me on it, because I didn't have a clue what my horn would be capable of. Yeah. And we came up this and we were chatting about, you know, the difference between guiding and trying to become a sponsor climber. Yeah. And I was saying, you know, with my horn and my epaulets and stuff like guiding might not be like a, an easy career to pursue yeah whereas like sponsorship as hard as it is might be the easier of the two options right and that was kind of like the kind of deciding point for me it was like right I'll I'll maybe try and go down that line and wow. see what happens and that's when I started to try and technically push myself a wee bit more yeah. Like, so life affirming solo, and it, man. <laughs> it is, especially yeah. in like really. I know it's like technically easy, but it's such a like, like consequential position. Yeah. Couple of loose rocks, but my god. You always want solo to be technically easy, don't you? Aye. Yeah. But just getting so involved, I that was just magic, man. Yeah, like really proper. Was, yeah. Exactly what I wanted it to be today. Yeah, exactly. Really, really enjoyed that. So good. Hi, this, this smile will stay in my face for a wee while, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>